Hey everyone, the name is Chris Barocci. Welcome to Gear Corner. Today, I want to figure out if you can still get a somewhat affordable yet very cool vintage tape machine. If it's even worth the trouble or are you better off just going for a modern delay pedal like a digital delay pedal that does the tape delay sound. Let me show you the pros and cons of this Gaiatone tape unit. It's uh, it's called the EM66, and there are some similar sort of old tape machines. Not only this, and not only Gaiatone is the brand. Obviously, reliability is sort of an issue. Uh, this works perfectly, but uh, I've seen a lot of these online, which were like, oh gosh, oh yeah, it's not working, but still costs a couple of hundreds of euros. So it's the thing about these, the first big, con is obviously going to be reliability and if you don't have someone like a technician who can take care of these for you you have to be the person who knows how to fix them they're sensitive and on top of that they are old like if we're talking about these somewhat affordable uh, like 70s japanese made or german made or all these kind of uh, tape machines they're just old right 50 years plus uh yeah In case you enjoy these kind of videos, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And uh, check out the description box. Under the video, you'll find all kinds of additional infos, what kind of drives I was using, which amp I'm using, my signal chain, etc. There's just something about these tape machines. And uh, I'm not even sure if that has to do anything with how old they are, honestly. I mean, there are some modern uh, actual analog tape uh, pedals and tape machines and whatever uh, that you can buy and those are just as good. It's not just the age, it's just the type of delay. Because for a machine like this, you will need a preamp. In most cases, you will have a very cool preamp that already changes the tone of your, your rig, your guitar and everything. So that's already a big factor. As soon as you turn something like this on or just connect it to your signal chain, that will already influence what you're getting. Thank you. 
if we're talking about a digital recreation of these tape machines, uh, that's a big factor. There is a good reason for, uh, I think, Dunlop or MXR, um, they made the Echoplex preamp pedal. And also there's the uh, exotic, um, what's it called, the EP booster, which is the Echoplex preamp. These preamps just do something to the guitar tone that is really hard to describe. It's just the kind of thing that you don't really want to turn off afterwards. <laughs> so it's not only just a boost thing. It's not like a drive, even though it can drive your amp harder. It's just about the, uh, the tone shaping feature of it. And that's definitely something that I've uh, felt with the, uh, the EM66 as well. I, I plugged it in, I just started playing a little and I was like, what is, what makes this sound so different uh, and I'm not only talking about the repeats, but the whole experience is just so different compared to the guitar going dry into the amp. That's what makes, in my eyes at least, these things so cool and so desirable. <laughs> Let's talk about the delay times you can get with the uh, Gaia tone here. Uh, there are notches, five or six of them, and those are your delay times. That's that's all you get. You cannot fine tune, adjust it the way you like it or whatever. It's it's what you have, and you have to work with it. So, if you have like a super modern rig, that's already something that would make you go crazy. Of course, there's no tape, uh, tap, tempo, and nothing like that. So you have what you have work with it, uh, which is something that I always find inspiring and definitely not, I don't feel like that's um, putting me in a cage. It's just something that's the nature of these things. Uh, but all of those delay times, all those settings you have on the, uh, on the EM66 are really short. Like even the longest one is just a little bit longer than what I would call a slapback delay. And all of the shorter ones are just literally different types of different flavors of uh, slapback. Normally when I hear a short delay, I immediately start playing, you know, rockabilly stuff and maybe reggae flavored stuff, something where it's obvious to hear a slapback delay. <laughs> You can do so many things with a really short delay, especially if it sounds so beautiful and sort of wobbly as uh, as like a tape delay sounds like. And um, and I, I figured that I love it much more than I thought, like this, this short delay time on its own. So it really is not uh, imprisoning you in any way. It's just not something you will want to play your dotted eight edge uh, licks with, right? So for that, you need, of course, a longer delay, but 
for whatever else. Like it's just something to make your guitar tone sound a little more roomy. It's awesome. If you want something to be in the background and not really uh, getting in the way of your playing, it's awesome. You can play with tons of gain, uh, you can do whatever you want, you know, play your faster licks, it does not mess with the articulation. Like, as soon as you play a lot of notes, the delays are somewhat in the background, and as soon as you stop on a note or just play something where you have more space between the notes, you can hear all those cool repeats and, and all that warble and everything. It's, oh man, I love it. And since we're talking about an actual analog delay unit, the self-oscillating sort of crazy feedback, you know, the endless feedback, that's just something that is on a different level. Like I've never heard any digital tape delay pedal that did that in such a way. Like there are things that are absolutely unexpected, things happen, it just gets louder or quieter depending on whatever. What I also love about this guy tone is that it uses an 8-track tape. It's literally an 8-track tape and uh, <laughs> it's amazing. I love that. Okay, let's try to get this kind of tone, this kind of uh, EM66 tone with one of my favorite uh, modern delay pedals. This is the Wampler Metaverse. And um, I love that because it has a number of different uh, sounding tape delay tones or emulations. And it's fully digital, obviously, because it's a pedal, there's no tape inside. I'll choose the tape delay mode that sounds closest to the EM66. And I'll try to match the amount of wobble, like modulation, the, uh, the delay time feedback, and even the, the tone of the repeats. Okay, super interesting. I think it's it's um, obvious why I like the Metaverse that much. It's an amazing sounding delay. And um, regardless of how close I got to the Gaia Tones tone, I just love what I got with the Metaverse. Um, what I was still kind of missing uh, was that kind of warmth. 
something liveliness something that's most probably just the the preamp uh, of the Gaia tone and um, obviously as soon as I removed the uh, tape machine from the signal chain and went straight into the uh, the metaverse this preamp was just not there anymore so the tone was clear which is awesome don't get me wrong I love that it was just um, a different experience really so when you're playing these and uh, try to a b uh, a digital tape delay emulation compared to an actual tape machine there's always just something that is not exactly the same and um, i'm not talking about worse or better or whatever it's just a very different experience so um, if you want to nail that kind of feeling which is probably not even that easy to spot for the listener but for the player for sure uh, if you want to nail that feeling of a tape machine you will probably need to pair most of the uh, digital delay pedals that do the tape delay thing with a preamp some sort of a preamp pedal oh, and there's one more thing about all these old tape machines they're loud like you can actually hear all that mechanic noise coming out let me let me turn it on for a sec What are my thoughts on this whole thing? Like, is it worth hunting down one of these old tape machines? Um, to be honest, if you want that without tweaking with modern, non-analog stuff, then of course, of course, there are still a couple of um, old units and brands that are not ridiculously expensive. Um, stuff that you can get from in an okay-ish condition or good condition between, I don't know, 400 bucks or euros, it's pretty pretty much the same thing, or um, or 600 or maybe 800 euros or, or dollars, um, that's still, for something that's so hard to find and so old, that's, that's a good price. If these will also go, you know, above a thousand dollars, I don't know anymore. <laughs> There's a limit for everyone, of course, and this limit is going to be different, what it, what these things are worth for you, but I think it's just a lot of fun, especially for the player. Uh, so whoever wants to justify with uh, the, these kind of decisions, uh, purchasing decisions with, will the audience hear it? Maybe, maybe not. All right, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this whole vintage tape machine kind of situation. How you like the tones I got with the Gaia Tone or with the uh, Monter Metaverse. Uh, yeah, see you next week in a new video and uh, meet you down there in the comments. I'll be back. Bye-bye.